Hello, my name is Lando Guardado, and this is the quantification of the microplastics along selected Southern California estuaries. The content of this presentation will be broken down into the following sections. What are microplastics and why do they matter? The introduction of the, uh, the project's theme, field methods uh, utilized in the estuaries, the laboratory methods used, the results of the analysts uh, followed by the discussion where the results will be interpreted and ending with the references. So what are microplastics? Generally speaking, they are the remaining bits of fragments of degraded plastic habits that were worn down time ago. Unlike natural materials, this was man-made substance does not biodegrade, rather only breaks down into smaller fragments of its original self. As defined by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, microplastics are small particles of less than five millimeters in diameter but can also be strands or fibers, which are typically shed through the wash cycle. So why should we take the time to analyze the amount of microplastics in our estuaries? In general, as population centers grow, so does the level of urban trash generated and the amounts of plastic discarded, which can then be transported down to sensitive marine ecosystems. Although further human health impacts of microplastics are needed to determine human risk, it can be observed through post-marine life necropsies that microplastics can cause mortality to marine life through excess ingestion. For example, there are the various images of seabirds chock full of microplastic debris we've all seen at one point or another. Microplastics, however, that are not carried down the uh, stream discharge are likely to be deposited along the stream sediment, locking it in place until disturbed. The repercussions of this effect are seldom understood right now since the issue is due to a relatively modern product. Microplastic behavior in sediment is interesting and unlike water or air, where it's usually being locked or stored in, in place rather than being mechanically moved. Unlike untouched systems, it was expected to observe microplastics in these systems, but at a differential rate depending on estuary system environment or route. In general, systems such as Topanga Canyon and Malibu Lagoon which border protective state park land and residencies were expected to perform at a low end of the spectrum, while urbanized and industrial environment systems were ex uh, expected to perform high. A study to quantify and set a baseline for the microplastics of these sites was performed from January to February of 2020, with data samples collecting from the five estuary systems from October 2019 to February of 2020. The field sites chosen for this analyst were Topanga Beach, uh, Topanga Beach, uh, Canyon, Topanga Canyon Beach, Malibu Lagoon, Caleguas Creek, Almond Beach, and the Ventura River. These sites were chosen due to the relative short distance from campus and their trajectory into state park lands, residential zones, and urbanized or industrial zones. Sediment was collected from six points along the estuary system, with three points along the lower half and three points in the upper half. These three points or center edge and bank of the stream were probed using the metal spoon and sediment collected from the top five centimeters layer of the soil within the stream. Upon collection, sediment samples were stored inside a small sandwich Ziploc bag labeled and transported back to campus, which was stored inside a laboratory grade dryer for at least 72 hours to ensure all moisture content was removed. This process was necessary in order to ensure an accurate and standard weight was achieved. Here on the left, we can see uh, Malibu Lagoon estuary system of proportion where the upper estuary samples were taken. And on the right, we can see the lower portion of the estuary system where the lower portion samples were taken as well. Once the samples have dried approximately 72 hours in the dryer, they were taken out and loosened up by hand through the plastic Ziploc bag. 100 grams of sediment were measured out and weighed from the bag and placed inside a clean and dry mason jar. 400 milliliters of hypersaline solution previously created was measured out with a beaker and added to the mason jar along with the sediment. This saline sediment mixture was then agitated and allowed to sit in place for another 72 hours. As the sediment settled to the bottom of the glass, most microplastic materials would have suspended along the jar's water column allowing it to be collected through the hypersaline substrate solution. An error, however, was introduced in this process, though, due to the fact that not all, not all microplastics will be suspended in the hypersaline solution, 
with denser particles remaining unsuspended and uncounted. Here on the left, we can see scale weights I used to measure the 100 grams of sediment. And on the right, the large container I used to store my hypersaline solution, which was made using a sodium chloride powder and water. At the end of the 72 hour plastic suspension process, the mason jars were carefully opened and very slowly poured over a, a wide metal sift and into a 1,000 milliliter beaker. This was intended to not disturb the sediment at the bottom of the jar, but to also capture any sediment that was accidentally poured out. The captured hypersaline solution was then divided into 400 milliliter test tubes, labeled with the site and area it was sampled from, uh, sampled from and set aside for an acid digestion. To initiate the acid digestion, 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and 10 milliliters of Fenton region were added to each test tube. The test tubes were then covered with foil paper at the rim of the tube and placed in the tube rack inside the controlled water bath environment within the fume hood at 27 degrees centigrade. The solution was then allowed to react in place for a period of at least 48 hours or until the reaction has stopped. If the solution was particularly organic rich, as such was the case for Topanga Ventura River, they were subjected through a second round of digestion by adding, uh, by adding 10 milliliters of peroxide to the test tubes once again. Once the test tubes had been reacted at the end of the 48 hour period, they were removed from the water baths and prepared for filtration. This process, this required the removal of foil paper from the test tube rims and for the remaining supermaton to be poured out into a 1,000 milliliter beaker. At this portion of the laboratory methods, a powerful vacuum pump in the ESRM prep lab was used to filter out microplastics from the supernatant. The vacuum pump was fashioned with a series of ports where the polycarbonate filter membrane of three microns was placed on. Above the filter port, an open bottom glass beaker was clamped on or clamped down and poured with a, rea with a reactive supernatant. At this point, the pump was turned on, forcing the supernatant, uh, su supernatant to be filtered through the polycarbonate membrane, trapping the plastic microplastics on the surface of the uh, filter membrane. This was then stored inside a clear plastic case and allowed to dry overnight before analyzing under a microscope. This was done after the first sample was noticed to have developed dew and water droplets inside the container, blocking eyesight and creating error. The next days, the samples were analyzed under an Olympus SC61 microscope integrated with a Luminara Infinity microscope camera. The plastic container holding the filter membrane was then separated into four segments, allowing for easier visual inspection of the sample. Discovered microplastic debris were documented directly under Microsoft Excel through a data table and separated between predetermined classes of either plastic particles or plastic fibers and color. First glance of the results, we can see that the highest amounts of microplastics were concentrated on Long Caligus Cree estuary system with a total of 429 microplastic debris collected. We can also observe that the highest concentration of microplastic for Caligus Creek was the lower portion estuary containing a total of 288 microplastic debris. The lowest performing site, which was shot continued based on the area's history, was Ormond's Beach with a total of 140 microplastic particles collected with 93 uh, particles observed in the lower estuary. The Ventura River saw a total of 249 microplastic collected in total with Topanga Canyon seeing 219 and Malibu Lagoon seeing a total of 283 microplastics. Interestingly, the area where the sediments was collected seemed to have a different or influ influence compared to the rest of the site's area. We can see that the edge portion of the estuary, that is where the water edge is located at, acted almost as a magnet for microplastics, causing a sink effect for transporting microplastics. Again, Caligus Creek outperformed all other systems with a total of 204 particles collected on the edge environment, followed by the Ventura River at 116 particles and Malibu Laguna 114 particles. Topagan Beach and Almond Beach both perform low in the scale at 85 and 44, respectively. Although levels of microplastic differed heavily depending on site, all systems saw the edge area of the site to have more of the microplastic abundance when compared to the center and banks of the estuary system. 
Collectors created the Government Beach were interesting sites to study because I initially grouped these two systems as industrial urban zone systems, where I would have expected to find similar levels of microplastic abundance. Weirdly, the complete opposite was true, where Collegos Creek was the highest microplastic polluted system and Ormond Beach was the least. This, was not, uh, this, this would not have dismayed me as, as it did if the systems were opposite, that is, at least one of them transversely natural protected site, but that was not the case since both systems were considered either urban or industrial. Highlighted in the graph, you can see the green bar uh, as the spiked amounts of microplastic along Calagras Creek, with the yellow bars highlighting the poor performance of Ormon Beach. Upon analyzing of the results, we can conclude that the sites with the most abundance of microplastic was observed in the Calagas Creek system and the lowest observed in the Ormon Beach system. All systems also showed a sink effect on the edge areas of the sites, favoring these locations against the center and bank locations. A total of 915 microplastic particles and 405 microplastic fibers were collected in this study, totaling 1,320 microplastics collected overall. I was curious to see if a significance and difference exists in between focal points such as the center location and the edge location of the sites. A two-part ANOVA was performed to quantify this and, was suggested, and suggested no significance in effect on location existed with a p-value of 0 0.49. Additionally, the large disparity uh, encountered between Calagas Street and Ormond Beach was put through an ANOVA test uh, to measure significance on effective sites. This proved that a significance did in fact exist in between sites, but only between Calagas Street and Ormond Beach with a value of 0 0.02. The, the sink effect noticed in the edges of the creek is not statistically significant to prove it is indeed microplastic dumping ground. However, their elevated numbers do continue to suggest importance to understand this effect, since they are visually different. This effect, though, can be attributed to the seasonal flood in these systems experience annually uh, during the wet winter months of Southern California. The watershed of these systems is able to gather the microplastic debris and transport them to the estuary system. It is possible that during these events, microplastic debris is deposited in the sediment soil along the edge, where the speed and discharge of the channel is at its lowest. In conclusion, microplastics were discovered in sediment in all of the sites analyzed in the study and was found to be heavily present in the Calagas Creek system. It was also observed that the edge location of the study contained the most microplastic abundance compared to the center and bank location of the system. However, a two-factor NOVA test suggests that no significance existed among site locations with a p-value of 0.49. A second two-factor ANOVA was conducted to determine if a significance existed among sites and was determined that it did have a significant effect when comparing Calabria's Creek and Ormond Beach. A final third ANOVA test was conducted to determine if the site's surrounding uh, environments, such as being in a state park or industrial zone, had a significant effect on the levels of microplastics observed, and it was determined that no significant effect uh, existed based on the site's surrounding environment with a p-value of 0.72. To further determine this is the significance uh, based on sites existed, a post haba comparison using a Tukey's HSD test was conducted. This determined that the mean number of microplastic in the system was statistically significant and different than each other with a p-value less than 0.05. Oddly, Ormond Beach was identified as a top polluted system, but was quantified to have the least amount of microplastic conducted uh, to other five systems, or compared to the other five systems. The quantification of this system's microplastic was difficult to conduct since the supernatal reaction did not react as expected. This sample was uh, inter interesting in that it created an exothermic reaction in the test tube with foaming bubbles forming at the rim. This sample was separated from the rest of the test tube and allowed to react alone. At the end of the reaction, the mixture contained a heavily orange liquid which resisted the filtration process. The end result was an orange carbon filter membrane with visible plastics on the surface, but also possibly rust and dark clear particles, uh, possibly glass on, uh, on the bottom as well. This introduced additional errors into the study by adding unknown substances at the end result and reducing the ability to efficiently analyze the sample. I hope you enjoyed this presentation into the quantification of microplastics along estuary systems of Southern California. 
I definitely had the best time performing the study in the field with my professors and colleagues, and I hope to build from this study again in the future. Once again, my name is Leo Guardado, or Leandro Guardado. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great time.